So we'll do one more video on my uh, 8 track Walkman. I like to call it that because it's funny. But it was, to be a Walkman it, it has to be portable. You have to be able to carry it around. And it does have these shoulder, sla shoulder strap clips but it didn't come with the brackets and I'm sure if I looked on eBay I'd find them for sale somewhere but I got enough tools here I can fab up some brackets and, uh, and a shoulder strap and then I can carry it around the mall. Uh, you know, and, and jammed my jammed my eight track tapes. <laughs> see what the young youngins think of that, huh? Let's see if I get some footage of that too. Uh, but I don't want to be blaring out of this speaker. Maybe when I'm outside at the mall, I'll do that. But when I'm in the mall, uh, I want to you know put on a headset. And this doesn't come with any type of a of a headset um, jack. So I'm either going to repurpose that uh, nine volt input for a, a one eighth um, um, inch uh, headset jack. Or I'll just drill another hole here and make one if I want to keep the 9 volt because I don't have the 9 volt adapter and it has the power adapter for 120 volts anyway. Um, interestingly enough, there's a little switch right there. If you can see it right in the middle of those pins, as soon as that something gets plugged in, then it disconnects the batteries. And the same thing will have to be for the 8 inch, um, uh, 1 8 inch uh, jack. As soon as you plug in the, uh, the headset, it has to cut the speaker out. So the speaker has to get run through that so it can break and make. The speaker uh, for this um, so it's either one or the other um, now this is an 8 ohm speaker and I'm going to be using like 60 ohm headset uh, that's not a problem though I mean you, 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 you're, you're just gonna have to crank the volume a little bit more than you normally would um, if it is a problem then I'd have to build a small amplifier but I've done that before with low impedance headsets like you know 60 ohms is pretty low you, some, you can even get down to 30 ohms um, and then you don't you know for sure then the volume will work fine but uh, those are the two mods I want to do. Um, what I find interesting is for something that was supposed to be portable, I'm curious why they bothered to put this 120 volts on there because that means you have to put a transformer in this thing. Well, you got heavy batteries in this thing, and now you got a transformer in this thing, uh, and, and you know, and then some more circuitry to to regulate that power. And you were trying to make things very small, like the time, right? This is 1977, we figured from the last video. They could have just went with the 9 volt adapter and your wall work and that would have been really low because you could have come straight in with 9 volts DC, hardly any power regulations necessary at all. Um, you wouldn't have that big transformer in here, this thing would be even lighter. But uh, apparently they, uh, they just didn't want to do that. But you know, that's a mod we could make except for I really don't want to power it. I don't, I'm not going to carry it around that much really. So I'm, I'm going to probably power it from 120 volts most of the time or I'm going to power from the batteries and the little extra weights on a problem. But let's get into making those brackets and modding this thing for a, a headset and uh, to the bench. I figure some cheap tools from Harbor Freight and caliper and some dividers and I've done some math and it looks like um, I can take and make some of a piece of scrap metal. Uh, might take a little while but uh, let's have a shot at it. Here we go. It's uh, got their exact profile smoothed out it's a little thinner than this uh, strap steel. I had to thin it up to the to the dimensions, and uh, just slides right in, clicks, and then when you want to take it out, you just push this button, and then it comes out. I think I earned my uh, fine fabrication, fine fabrication and grinding, oh badge today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now just cut out this top foil profile and clean it up. And then make another one. Yeah. There, I just traced this. Uh, this one's made just so perfect. I just traced it. A lot less measurements involved. A lot less marking problems. And if you want to know how I've been doing it, I have a portable a cordless Dewalt angle grinder. I just cut the bulk lines, cut the bulk piece in the center, and I take the Dremel tool with a stone. I clean up that inside, and I, then I clean up the edges with the grinder on the bench. It's a little work, but that's all it's to it. There you go, two fabbed up shoulder strap bracket buckles. There we go, some silver paint, and I think my first mod is basically done. I salvaged this strap off my old camera that I started blogging. My very first video I ever made was with a, all these old eight, those old tape drives they used to have, the Super 8, or whatever they're called. And uh, this is a shoulder strap from that old machine. And so this should just pop right in there. 
That's on. And let's see if this one fits. There we go. And we have a fully portable shoulder mount, shoulder strapped, ready to go. Next mod. Yeah, there we go. I'll walk around and get on my A track. <laughs> That's sweet. So the second mod, of course, is adding the headset, or the headphones. And the first thing I was do is check, is there any way of making a stereo? Well, this is a stereo reed head, but it's only got this one brown wire coming down, which has a, essentially, uh, it's just two wires coming out of it. The one's going to be for the ground, and one's for the feed in for the pickup, and that comes up here. And I don't see anything else around here that looks like a second, a second, uh, stereo amplifying circuit and anything like that though it probably has you know all these holes and everything it's probably designed to do so in a different unit it's just not populated speaking of not populated you see that leg right there it's a capacitor a little um, ceramic capacitor and it's supposed to go in that hole right there it's got wax on it so it's never been in there and I looked in the back side and there's some solder flow back there, but of course this leg was never in. So I'll go ahead and poke that through, clean up that leg, poke that through and solder it on. It probably makes very little difference, but it's obviously supposed to be there and it's been missing all these years. Uh, as far as hooking up the headset, well there's two holes in the plastic here. A large one probably for like a quarter inch jack and then here's a one eighth inch jack. There's actually metal on the outside. There's no hole here, there's no hole here, um, but the plastic has it for it and the mounting brackets for it. So what I think I'll do is, is I'll probably just uh, you know, use the smaller hole and just drill it out and then just pop in um, a stereo jack, but I'll hook it up mono, meaning I'll have, this is only actually, this is actually picking up both left and right channels, because right now it's got the left and right connected together right here. So it's picking up left and right together and amplifying them up through this circuit together. So I'll just continue that over here and just stick both of them into the left and right. And then that way you, you jack in a stereo headset and you'll hear the same thing in both ears. But, you know, it's the best it's going to do. Unless I felt like, <laughs> as long as I felt like actually using this stereo head and running extra wires and building my second amplification circuit and yada, yada, yada. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's not worth it. So this is the... Eighth inch uh, audio jack for hooking up essentially a headset. And if you if you jack it in, you can you can actually see through this. It has like a little window, which is nice. I saw it just off of something. And on your headset or your headphones, you'll see there's a left channel, right channel, and ground. And when you jam this in, the ground connects up here in this section, goes through that. That's the ground for both for your speakers. And then you have a connector for left that little right there and then for right right there and they go through these um, essentially these little switches and the reason there's little switches there is if you can look in there carefully you can see the switches are currently disconnected that means that the audio goes through to your headset but when you unplug those two little switches hook back up and now audio goes to your internal speakers and this is a stereo jack so you have a throughput for your left channel and your throughput for your right channel um, going to your speakers and then this is just common to to, your, to everything in your system. Then we can show that that is how it works by just doing a continuity test here real quick. So these should be connected right now. That means it's going through, there's nothing hooked up. It goes through to your speaker, right speaker, and that goes through to your left. And then as soon as you plug that in, And that no longer will happen, so we'll just do one side just to show you. This is disconnected. So now you don't have any audio signal going to your speakers. There's no signal driving your speakers. So that's what we're going to hook up. But we have a, a mono, uh, that is the left and right channel on my 8-track, is picked up, both left and right are picked up and amplified through a single channel. Which means I'm just going to put, essentially, both of them, because I'm going to hook up the stereo headphones, I'll just, uh, I'll just feed that signal both through left and right. Um, 
and uh, and then a ground of course. I was able to mark the center where I need to drill and the glue released real easy. I didn't even have to heat it or anything. It, it just slid a knife under it. I can put that back down with a bit more glue. There you go. Real slow drill with a wood back clamp. <laughs> Clean that up with a file and I have a hole. And there we have it screwed in. Um, we have the red wire goes over to the speaker. The two yellows are for the signal and ground. And then that little yellow jumper is just because this is a mono only and I want to go to a stereo headset. Got to glue this faceplate back on now. That's the original hole that was covered. So I'll spray the back of this with some of this uh, 3M Super 77. So let's check this simple little hack. I got it hooked up to my bench power supply, mostly just for safety, so it's mimicking the batteries. Uh, we'll turn it on and we should only hear sound coming out of the speakers because this isn't plugged in. My, heads, my headphones aren't plugged in. So I'll turn on my bench power supply over here. Uh, and then we get sound out of the main speaker. When I plug this in, it should go to my headset. Yeah. I had to turn the volume down a little bit, but yeah. You can hear it. And it comes, the same sound comes through both. And so now I can walk around with my uh, headphones on and uh, not bother people when I'm at the mall with my jammin' Walkman 8-track player. <laughs> there you go. All battery powered. Plug in. Turn it down a little bit. And I'm portable. And this is what this looks like. It's a little, little bit of a hole and it's glued back on nicely. There we go. Got a portable, jacked in headset, can walk around, uh, can share if I want, just turn it up. Plug it back in and totally portable, 8-track. Thanks for joining. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll have lots of fun here. You might enjoy watching. Bye.